Okay, Calc 2 students, welcome to the video for Section 10.6, Calc 2 Alternating Series. All right, so we're going to talk all about alternating series and how to analyze the series for convergence. Okay, so to begin with, one thing that we learned about was the harmonic series, all right? And remember, the harmonic series was given by summation k equals 1 to infinity 1 over k. All right, well, it turns out back in the 1300s, uh, a person by the name of Orem actually proved that this thing diverges. All right, and this is way before calculus was even developed. Okay, so he was, people were analyzing uh, some infant series of certain types back then, so algebraically he was able to, to do that then. All right, so let's see. The alternating series that we're going to look at, and this is an alternating harmonic series, is summation k equals 1 to infinity, and then we add in this negative 1, k plus 1, uh, all over k. All right, and we're going to take a look at what the difference is on that. Uh, a couple of things I want to show you. This is a real good website. Uh, Desmos. This is a Desmos series calculate. So if you want to get a picture of how a series goes, this is kind of a cool tool to use. All right, so this is the harmonic series. And what it's doing is it's doing, the calculator is just kind of quickly doing partial sums. So this is the sum of the first 60, 50 of uh, the first hundred, first thousand, all the way up to the first hundred thousand. So if you look at the harmonic series and the way it turns out, it keeps getting bigger forever, so it diverges. It doesn't ever level off like to a horizontal asymptote or anything. Okay, now I want to show you what happens if I do one little thing here. Let me see if I can do this okay on here. If I want to turn this into a... Eh, it's not going to work. Let's turn it into an alternating harmonic series. So we'll do this, and let's see, n plus 1. Whoop. Nope, not like that. Nope, nope, nope. Let's try again. <laughs> oh, crap. I think I probably have to do a parenthesis. Okay, let's try it this way. There we go. All right, and then I'm going to put in uh, 1 over n. So that's, uh, that's an alternating uh, harmonic series. And if you kind of zoom on this, what you'll see is, of course, uh, 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 series that um, alternate are going to go like this, going to go back and forth as the sign changes. But if you look at this and look at the partial sums, it looks like this is converging. So you're going to see that the alternating harmonic series converges. So this was kind of a, a cool little series calculator that's on Desmos that you might want to take advantage of. It kind of gives you a, a nice picture of how series go. Now, when you're doing your homework and stuff, you can't just plug stuff in. I mean, you've got to analyze and use the calculus to prove uh, it, a series convergence. All right, so that's how that goes. All right, so what we know about the alternating harmonic series is uh, that's going to converge. Okay, so we're going to go down and begin to investigate this a little bit. So that converges. And we're going to look at the harmonic series just for a minute, and then the alternating harmonic series and show you kind of what happens. All right, so here's the harmonic series. <clears throat> and then this second one is the alternating <clears throat> harmonic series. So if we do a partial sum, it goes like this. The first term is 1. S2 would be... 1 plus a half, so that's 3 over 2. S3 would be 1 plus a half plus a third, that's 11 over 16. And uh, the next one would be 1 plus a half plus a third plus a fourth, so that would end up going to 25 over 12. So what we kind of saw on that Desmos is this thing gets bigger forever. It doesn't level off at any value, okay? Now, if we look at the alternating harmonic series, the first term is 1, okay? But then you get into 1 minus a half, which would be 1 half. <clears throat> then 
then s of 3 would be 1 minus a half plus a third. See, the signs are alternating. And if you do that, you can do that on a calculator, uh, get a common denominator, you'd get 5 over 6. And then s of 4 would be 1 minus a half plus a third minus a fourth. So that would be 7 over 12. Okay, so what we're doing is when we're looking at a series convergence, we're looking at the partial sums and we're seeing if we see any pattern of convergence on that then. So what happens on this is uh, this is your harmonic series. And what happens on this is we've already concluded that diverges. And what happens is the partial sums just increase forever without bound, okay? And this one is the alternating harmonic series. And we just are kind of concluding just by visually inspecting it and with that Desmos calculator that that converges. And what happens is the sums oscillate. And what I mean by oscillate is they kind of they go back and forth, they kind of get um, uh, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger, but they are going to come within some range. So they do converge, and we saw that on the calculator. Okay, so let's go to the next page, and this one is just a picture uh, of the alternating harmonic series like I showed on Desmos. You can see the oscillation of the partial sums, and it looks like it's going to go to some value the sum of the infinite series is somewhere between 0.6 and 0.8, okay? So what we're going to focus on here is the alternating series test, and we'll look at lots and lots of examples of how you use the alternating series test. So first of all, what you have to do is um, alternating series are generally written like that. That just depends on you know, whether the series, the first term's negative or positive, okay? So it can be like that easy to spot, and uh, remember that the divergence test applies to all series, all right, so we can always look at the divergence test anytime we want to, okay, just to kind of quickly test for divergence, all right, so let me pause here just for a second, uh, so remember about the divergence test, so this is the divergence test is real simple, if, um, if the limit of a sub n is different than zero, then you're going to conclude that the series diverges. Otherwise, if it's equal to zero, the test is inconclusive, so you would have to work with another series test then, all right? So the way this works on the alternating series test is this. Uh, first of all, you have to do two things. The first thing you have to do is show that the terms are non-increasing. A couple of things I want to point out about this is when you're looking at this, you're disregarding this part. That's the part that makes the, se the series alternate. So this part right here, that would just be a term. That's just some arbitrary term. And then a sub k plus 1 is just the next term. So what you're doing and what this says is it just says the next term is going to be smaller than the previous term. So what's going to happen is you're going to have things that are decreasing in nature, so it's got to go like that, and they have to be positive. Now remember, since you're disregarding the part that makes the terms oscillate from negative to positive, this, th this term should be greater than zero. All right, so just think of everything is going down. Now see, these terms can be equal to each other. That's why we don't say decreasing. It's okay if it's non-increasing, okay? All right, so let's go down. Let's begin to do this. The next thing is then you do the limit uh, of a sub k. Again, you disregard the alternate, the part that makes it alternate. If that's zero, then you've got a converging alternating series. Okay, so there's two things that you got to do when you're working out problems like this. You're doing something like on a test, and if I say do use the alternating series test, you got to show these two things, and you got to show them clearly on your paper. Okay. All right, so the first thing is, is we're going to check to see if the terms are non-increasing. Now, one way to do this is uh, if you just look at, you know, again, you just kind of uh, ignore this. And if you were looking at your terms, what you would have on there, if you plug in 0, you would have 1 over 0 squared plus 10. 
and then we would have 1 over 1 squared plus 10, and then we'd have 1 over 2 squared plus 10, and so forth. Okay, you can visually tell what's happening on this problem. You've got 1 tenth, then you have 1 eleventh, then you have uh, 1 fourteenth, and so forth. Okay, so you can tell those things are getting smaller. So that you can tell by looking that it's not increasing. Okay, well, what we want to do on this, though, <clears throat> is that's not really good enough. We want to do a little bit more with this. So continuing with step one, we're going to set up this inequality that's in this theorem here. <clears throat> so we have zero less than a sub k plus one, less than or equal to a sub k. All right, so let's form this inequality then. So first of all, a sub k plus one would just mean that you add one to this term here. So what you would end up having is you would end up having one over k plus one to the second plus 10. And we want to show that that's less than or equal to uh, one over k squared plus 10. Now you can really kind of look at this visually and tell. So here's what happens on this. You know, is this true? All right, so here's how we can tell this is true. You just got to kind of explain this. Well, the terms are positive, okay, because k starts with zero <clears throat> and goes through positive numbers, so everything's positive. But the thing on this is what makes this true is this denominator is bigger, okay? So what happens on this, you can actually, if you went through and cross-multiplied this like this, what you'd end up getting is you'd get 1 times k squared plus 10, <clears throat> excuse me, is less than or equal to uh, k plus 1 squared <clears throat> plus 10. Okay, and that is true. Yeah, that's true because this denominator is bigger. Okay, and see, that's what this is saying. Notice that the numerator always is the same. If the denominator keeps getting bigger forever, then those terms are not increasing. So that's what you do there. That's step one. Okay, now we move on to step two. So we're going to do the limit <clears throat> as k goes to infinity of 1 over k squared plus 10. Okay, so we don't worry about the part that makes it alternate. This is easy to do in your head. This just kind of has the, the structure 1 over infinity. So that goes to zero. You don't have to show anything on that because that's obvious. Okay, you know that... Uh, a number over infinity just always goes to zero. So therefore, we would say that this series converges by the alternating series test. Okay, so that's how I'd want your work to look on that. Do those two things, all right? You can write the things out. You don't have to write the terms out. You have to do this to show that it's not increasing. You can write the terms out, though, to help you see that, okay? and then show your limit. Sometimes there's work to do on the limit, sometimes there isn't, okay? Okay, so let's move to the next example. We have this alternating series. Again, uh, we're going to disregard this. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna look at whether it's non-increasing or not. All right, so I'm, what I'm gonna do to start with, so it's not a bad idea to just write out the terms. So we're gonna start with two and that's okay, you can start from anywhere you want to. And uh, what we have is ln of two over two to the second for your first term. Then it would go ln of three uh, over three to the second, ln of four over four to the second, and so forth. Okay, so it go like that. It's not real obvious on this. You'd have to kind of do this on your calculator and take a look at it. The denominator is clearly getting bigger. And actually what's happening is it's getting bigger faster, it looks like, than the numerator is. So the numerator is getting bigger and so is the denominator. So it's not real obvious whether that's non-increasing or not just by writing out the terms. So what we're going to do on this is we're going to do this. Remember we have the inequality that we want to show that uh, 0 is less than a sub k plus 1 less than or equal to a sub k. All right, so what we end up having here then is if we put this in, let's see, just replace k with k plus 1, 
So you would have ln k plus 1 all over k plus 1 to the second. And then we're going to see if that's less than or equal to a sub k, which is just ln of k over k squared. Okay, so again, if you look at that, that's just not totally obvious on that. So there's a different approach that we can do this. We're just going to use some basic calculus on this. You'll see this on some of your homework. Sometimes on my math lab, they'll guide you through doing the first derivative test. So what we're going to do on this is we're going to write this just as a, as a function. f of x equals ln of x over x to the second. So I'm just modeling this with a function. And I'm going to go ahead and do the first derivative. So the first derivative by the quotient rule would be the bottom times derivative of top minus top times derivative of bottom all over the bottom squared. Okay, so that looks like x squared over x is going to leave you x minus 2x ln x over 2x. Okay, whoops, hold on, that's not right. I forgot to square the bottom, didn't I? <laughs> that's not very smart. Okay, so we got this. We have x squared to the second like that. All right, now I'm going to move this up here then so I have some room to show you what I'm doing. This is the kind of stuff you do in Calc 1, actually. So we have x minus 2x ln x all over x to the fourth. And then I'm going to maybe do some factoring. It looks like I can factor out an x on this. So I can go ahead and take that out. <clears throat> so that would be x times 1 minus 2 ln x all over x to the fourth. So one of those would cancel, leaving you with the result. The first derivative is going to be equal to 1 minus 2 ln x all over x to the third after you cancel out, you know, one of those x's like that, okay? So what we're going to do with this then is um, we're going to analyze this. You can do this in a sign chart if you want to. So you want to basically find a critical point. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and, and do that. Okay, so to do this, now one thing on our series, we're starting at k equals 2. So we actually don't necessarily have to find a critical point on this. You can bypass this by doing this then if you want to. All right, so what you're trying to do is to show that this the terms are decreasing. Remember what we have to show is we have to show that f prime of x is equal to negative. And really all we're doing is we're looking at x greater than or equal to 2 because the series starts at 2. So if we can show that that value of that derivative is always negative from 2 and beyond, then we're okay. All right. So this is kind of the way I look at this like this. I'm just going to take this thing right here and let's see it. Let's just analyze whether this is true or not. Okay, so I'm going to set that less than zero and let's think about this. Okay, well, here's the thing. What we have here is the denominator is always positive. And the reason that denominator is always positive is because x is going to be positive numbers. Okay, we're going to, you know, if you take two to the third, 3 to the 3rd, and so forth, that's always positive, okay? And what happens on the numerator is you end up kind of getting this, okay? You're going to have, at a minimum, you're going to have 1 minus 2 ln of, um, of 2, and then you'll have 1 minus 2 ln of 3, and so forth when you do that then, okay? So what you can do on this then is you could set this numerator, 1 minus 2 ln of x, let's set that equal to 0. That would be 1 equals 2 ln of x. And then this would be 1 half equals ln x. So that would end up being that uh, e to the 1 half is equal to x like that. All right, so that's kind of where you have a critical point on that when you're doing that. So what you're going to find on this then, and there are several ways to, to look at this, you could do test points bigger than 2, like I'm doing here. So if you were making a sign chart, kind of like what you did in, in Calc, 
all we care about is x equals 2 and beyond. So if you did like a test point out here, like a 3 or something like that, then you can take your calculator and calculate, calculate that out if you want to. So what you're going to have is 1 minus 2 uh, ln of 3, and that's a negative number. Okay, so what you're getting out here is you're going to end up just getting negatives like that. So therefore, what you end up having is you have a negative over a positive. All right, so when we're doing this sign chart, you're always going to get a negative. Therefore, that proves that your terms are decreasing, okay? So we got that. So we've done, we've now proved the first part of the an analysis of the convergence. Okay, so that's something more like what you do in a Calc 1 class. Okay, now we move on to step two, and we're going to look at the limit as k goes to infinity of ln k over k to the second. Okay, now if it's not obvious what this is, then what you're going to need to do on this then is show some steps on this. All right, so there's several ways you can do this. First of all, this is a infinity over infinity form. Okay, like that. So you can see that in your head. So let's do L'Hopital's rule and see what happens then. So now we'll have the limit. K goes to infinity of 1 over K divided by 2K, like that. Okay. So that would just end up being, and, and algebraically you have 1 over k divided by 2k was just going to be 1 over k times 1 over 2k. So you'll end up having that. So this is going to be equal to the limit. Uh, k goes to infinity of 1 over 2k to the second. Okay, now it's pretty easy to do. Okay, this is just really going to be 1 over infinity when you do that. So that's equal to zero. But you got to show that L'Hopital's rule. You can't just, you know, think about this in your head. You need to show me something on that. All right, so here's kind of what we got. We proved that the, uh, that the terms were decreasing. We proved that the limit of a sub k was equal to zero. So what do we say? We say it converges. Okay, so on this particular problem, our conclusion would be, therefore, the series converges by the alternating series test. Okay, so that's how you do that. So sometimes you got to work with that stuff a little bit. Okay? All right, that's another good example. Let's go down to the next one here. Okay, so with this one, again, uh, just forget that part. And step one is we're going to look at, we need to show this basically, that 0 is less than a sub k plus 1 is less than or equal to a sub k. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to formulate this thing. Now, one thing that you can do, see, k is 2 <coughs> and bigger, so these terms are always going to be positive. If you disregard that, you're going to have like 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth are always positive, so that's pretty obvious. So let's go ahead and let's just do this. So what we're going to have is a sub k plus 1 is going to be 1 plus 1 over k plus 1. Now we're going to see if that's less than or equal to a sub k. So what we have to do is we have to show this. All right. Well, one thing that's going to happen on this is really if you're looking at this, the 1s just can cancel out like that because you're subtracting 1 from both sides there. So we have 1 over k plus 1 is less than or equal to 1 over k. All right. Well, okay. One thing I said before, and you'll see this a lot in this section, is that's a bigger denominator. And since it's a bigger denominator, that is true. Okay. Also, if you cross multiplied this, you would have 1 times k. If you cross multiply, you got to do it this way, uh, left to right. So you'd have 1 times k is k, less than or equal to k plus 1. Yeah, that's true. All right. So that would definitely show that we're non-increasing. Okay, so therefore we know that we're non-increasing. All right, so we got that taken care of. Now we go to step two. What we have to do is show the limit as x goes to infinity of a sub k. We're going to show that that's equal to zero. If it isn't, then uh, the alternating ser series test won't apply to this then. So what we're going to do is the limit as k, uh, uh, k goes to infinity 
of the series, 1 over 1 plus k, right? Well, what happens on this is this just get, becomes 1 plus 0, so that's equal to 1, okay? So what that would mean is, therefore, the alternating series test does not apply. Okay, so we can't really do this. If we wanted to continue with the analysis of this, we would have to do some other series test. Okay, so that really isn't going to get us anywhere on the analysis there. So we're kind of not able to conclude whether it converges or diverges based on the uh, alternating series test. All right, so that'll kind of get us started on this. Let's do one more here. And the one, one here that's got some factorials in it. And let's take a look at this one. Okay, so let's take a look at this alternating series. So again, why is it an alternating series? Because of this thing right here. When you analyze using the alternating series test, you just disregard that. And you only look at a sub k. All right? So again, two things. If you're doing alternating series test, if I give you an exam, which I will one day, and want you to analyze by alternating series test, you've got to show these two things. You have to. You can't take a wild guess. All right, so step one, what we have to show is that we're non-increasing. And we do that by looking at this inequality. Zero is less than a sub k plus one, less than or equal to a sub k. All right, so let's go ahead and formulate this. Now, in this particular part right here, see, k is a positive number. So if you do one factorial and two factorial and three factorial, you're always positive. And the same thing in the bottom, you're going to do like one to the first, two to the second, and so forth like that. So these terms are always positive. So we know that. All right. So let's go ahead and just focus on this part right here. Let's do a sub k plus one. So if we do that, we would end up having k plus one factorial over k plus one to the k plus one power. And we're going to see if that's equal, less than or equal to k factorial over k to the k power. Okay, and when you do factorials, you got to analyze this, uh, write things out. So I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so let's work with this expression here. This, uh, you know, scratch work here. But you want to show this. Okay, let's work with this, write it out and see if we can simplify this a little bit, okay? Because it probably simplifies. Okay, so remember, this is something you'll see all the time when you're working with factorials. So if you have, remember, k factorial, you just do k times k minus 1 times uh, k minus 2 and so forth forever. Well, if you're doing k plus 1 factorial, it's almost the same. It's just, okay, the first term would be k plus 1, then the second term would just be k, because that would go down 1, and then it would go down 1 from there, so you can write that like that. And you want to make sure that you understand why that is and how to write that. So we're going to write the k plus 1 factorial. It's just k plus 1. That's the first term. And the rest of the terms are represented by k factorial. Okay, the denominator, uh, if I look at this, like if you had something like, if you had something like 2 to the, x plus 1, well, that's just 2 to the x times 2 to the first, because this is the result of adding exponents from a multiplication problem. So this denominator could be written as k plus 1 to the k power times k plus 1 to the first power. Okay, so you can do that. So we've got that written out. Now, if you look at this, do you see anything canceling or anything? So it looks like that goes away. So it looks like what we have is we have k factorial and we have k plus 1 to the k power. All right, so we got that. All right, so let's move over here now. So we've done that work there. So this becomes k factorial over k plus 1 to the k power. And again, we're going to see if that's less than or equal to k factorial over k to the k. All right, now you either got to explain or show. Well, one thing that you can do on this, since you're dividing both sides by k factorial, on this, technically those would go away. That has no bearing on it. So we end up with 1 over k plus 1 to the k less than or equal to 1 over k to the k. We want to get to a point where we can show whether this is true or not. 
Okay, so one thing that you see here, and like I said, you see this all the time, this is bigger. This denominator is bigger than this denominator because K is, is positive numbers. So that is true for that reason. Okay, this is no different than the idea of one eighth is less than one seventh. The numerators are both the same. This is smaller than that because this denominator is bigger. Or you can do this, you can cross multiply. So if you cross multiply, you would get one times K to the K less than or equal to k plus 1 to the k, and that's true. Okay, now that's pretty obvious that that's true because this number is bigger. And remember, k in this series starts with 1, so k is going to be an integer greater than or equal to 1, so that's true always. Okay, so that's step 1. We've done that. So we've, uh, we've accomplished the first mission. Okay, so we can say, therefore... Uh, non-increasing. Okay, so we got that. Now what do we do? We move to step two, and in step two, you got to show this. Okay, step two, let's work out the limit of a sub k as k goes to infinity. And remember, uh, don't look at the part that makes it uh, alternate. Let's just do the limit of k factorial over k to the k as uh, k goes to infinity, okay, like that. Okay, well, let's see. If we were to go through and look at this, now we have to analyze this a little bit. Um, this is not obvious. It's, it's, it, it, clearly what's happening is you do have an infinity over infinity form of a limit. But, you know, you don't really have any way that you can take a derivative of, of uh, k factorial that you know about. So we're going to have to kind of analyze this and look at something else. Okay, so here's what I'm going to kind of look at is I'm going to write these terms out a little bit. Okay, so let's just work with these terms. Okay, let's write this as we're looking at the limit. K goes to infinity. Let's write out K factorial. So that would be K times K minus 1 times K minus 2 and so forth like that. And then if you look at the denominator, what we have is k to the k. Well, what does that mean? It just means k is multiplied out an infinite number of times, like that, all right? Well, clearly one thing that will happen here is uh, this thing will cancel out. So now you've got that point right there, all right? So one thing that's kind of helpful on this then is uh, to just kind of analyze what's happening on this. Okay, so let me show you kind of how we could work and finish this thing up here. Uh, I got something going on with my computer here. Hold on. Okay, so I think I'm back to normal here. All right, so I'm going to look at this like this and show you kind of uh, another way to look at this. Um, if you have k factorial... I mean, you can write it like this, of course, but it's also, you could kind of think of it as just being 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, blah, 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 until you get to k. Let's write it this way instead. So this is really 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, blah, 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 k. And then the denominator, since it's k to the k power, is just an infinite number of k's multiplied that go on forever like that. Okay, well, one of those would cancel out like this. So if you look at this, it's easy to tell that the, that the numerator is infinite. And it's easy to tell that the denominator is infinite. So you can use L'Hopital's rule on this problem. And it's easy to use L'Hopital's rule now. I mean, without really having to do much with this, this uh, that's just going to be a derivative of a constant, so that's zero. And technically, if you did this, you would end up with k times k to the k minus 1 power, so you're clearly getting 0 on that. Okay, so what we would do is we would say, therefore, the series converges by the alternating series test. All right, so that's how that goes. That's your alternating series test, and those are the two things that you got to do. All right.